Hello and thank you for watching this presentation by the American Iron Society. Please support the organization by becoming a member. Go to irises.org and click on join. Thank you. Well, welcome everyone and you are attending the first AIS sponsored judges training online and we're real excited about that. I know many of you that are connecting with us tonight and I'm real excited about that. So those of you that do know me know that I have a love for novelty irises, any other type of novelty plants I'm just fascinated with and I have been all my life. So when the novelty iris society was formed, that was just a dream come true for me. So anyway, tonight we're gonna to talk about flatties and we're gonna talk about broken colors. So I hope you join us for the next session, which we're gonna be talking about space age. So let's go ahead and, and get started. The question I get asked the most is, what are novelty irises? And novelty irises are broken color. Um, novelty irises are broken color, also known as random color application, color break, and variegated blossom. Novelty irises are also irises that have variegated foliage. Novelty irises are also space age, as are flatties, tulip, no top, and a few of the doubles that we're beginning to see with the exaggerated uh, petaloids. So the other question I always get asked are, are novelty irises something new? I mean, is this something that's just come about? And my quick answer is no. Um, they're not uh, new. They've been around and been discussed in early publication uh, last century. One of those books um, can easily be found online and it's called The Tall Bearded Iris, A Flower of Song. And Walter Steger combines a lot of poetry, flower poetry, along with his love and fascination for irises. So reading his book um, that he wrote in 1922, so almost 100 years ago, he talks about fluctuations that, and I wanna read you this quick sentence here, and you just have to visualize it in your mind what that has to look like. But he says, ordinarily the segments are simple, but sometimes there is a petal-like growth lengthwise along the center of the upper surface of the blade of one or more of the falls, which gives the flower the appearance of being double. He goes on to say that sometimes, but very rarely, and very rarely, a flower has four or six standards and the same number of falls and stamens. And we'll see some pictures of some of those. So anyway, he goes on to say that he believes that it's the environment um, that is causing these uh, multiplication of parts. So again, Mr. Steger continues with, such departures from the normal, though odd, can hardly be considered improvements, as so much of the beauty of the iris lies in its form. And it does lie in its form, it just looks a lot different than maybe in Mr. Steger writing almost 100 years ago. So let's start out with talking about the tulip type novelty irises. Not a lot of those on the market. The first one that I found uh, when I was doing my research is Penelope. And we know it was prior to 1859. And it is um, a bearded iris that has mutated into what is called a tulip type. That is, it will have six standards and no falls. And the tulip type of this iris typically has, usually has little or no beard. Other tulip type novelty irises are blue tulip, um, introduced in 1964, and third low weed, which was introduced in 1943, and the weed uh, iris was introduced by Lloyd Austin. And I'd like to thank all the people that have provided the pictures for me or allowed me to use the pictures because pictures tell the whole story, I think. So Child's catalog in 1926 um, introduced Penelope at 35 cents. And here is Penelope at the very top. And you can see those, those falls are up like a tulip. And then there's also Baracas and um, Madame Chereau and several others that, that they mentioned in their catalog. 
So I just want to briefly talk about no-top um, novel viruses. And the one that really, I think, um, tells a story with this is teacup. And teacup was introduced, I don't know, several years ago now by a local Texas hybridizer. And you'll notice, yes, it does have standards, but they're real stubby. They're very, very short. And even the style arms are even shorter. But beautiful iris and does display the qualities of definitely being a novelty iris. So let's talk about flatties. And flatties are probably the most sought after novelty iris that we have. And because, you know, anything that there's not a lot of, uh, they're highly sought after. So let's talk a lot about flatties tonight. So flatties are flat shaped flowers uh, with six balls arranged in a horizontal to downward arching pattern, typically, and I say typically, and I should perhaps underline that, with six visible beards. In the bearded iris classes, I have found where there are SDBs, there are IBs, border beardeds, and tall beardeds, but I have not found any miniature tall bearded flatties. So if you have a picture of one, if you have a seedling, if you know of one, I would be very grateful if you would send it to me and I'll be happy to, to include that in our program. And I'd, I'd really like to grow it too. So flatties, although there are usually no standards, the flowers will occasionally have one standard. This type of novelty iris is especially effective when the petals are very wide. Flat-shaped novelties may have one or two partially normal flowers on the same stalk, with the flat flowers an inconsistency that's to be expected, and again, but not desired. But when, you, when you're buying irises, or you're looking at the registration and introductions that the American Iris Society provides to us, you know, read the description, and hopefully the hybridizers are telling us if when they register their iris, a lot about the form of the iris. So total consistency, especially in a flatty, would be a plus. So we're gonna look at a lot of pictures here. So if the flower is comprised of both standards and falls, the standards must consistently grow flat at least 65% of the time. Those of us that have been working on the judge's training book believe that that should be more along the line of 85% of the time versus 65. But if this were a test question at some point, um, currently in our judge's training book, it's 65% of the time. Now we go on to say that weak floppy standards that collapse do not make a flat flower. And I think that makes good common sense. You know what I'm talking about. The style arms of the flat shaped flowers will most often appear in the normal quantity. However, may appear in multiple or irregular counts. So let's take a look at what I believe was perhaps the first flatty. And that's Dorothea. And it was introduced in 1901. So that's roughly you know, 120 plus years. It was introduced by Caparni and we all are familiar who Caparni was with the metal. Um, Mr. Steger, again, from his book in, uh, later in the 20s, discusses the Irish standards in the form of Dorothea as being almost horizontal. And we can see those are pretty much horizontal standards and falls. Dorothea is a registered as an IB, so it's an intermediate bearded. So she's relatively short. She's 16 to 18 inch stalks and blooms very early. Now, when I read this, I laughed because the description has this as a great fluffy flowers, seven inches across. Well, she might be seven inches across, but in today's time, we probably wouldn't say that's fluffy. Two other historical flatties are Lorelei that was introduced in 1909 and Japanese in 1922 by Parr. So both of these, you know, being at least 100, maybe a little bit over 100 years old, and Japanese, you're seeing the flat form here, but also we're seeing this broken color. In 1917 came the introduction of Clematis, and she's a real cutie, I think. Rainbow Gardens advertised the iris as a large six-petal Clematis. All six segments of the flower reflect horizontally. 
And this variety has very much the same form of the intermediate variety, Dorothea. Again, this is another picture of Japanese. Unfortunately, there was no record of the cross, but this is just another exaggeration that you can see definitely flat, definitely very wide falls here, and then that distinctive broken color. A very popular uh, novelty iris of Flatty is Rhythm. And Rhythm was introduced 66 years ago. Um, it's 24 inches tall, and it is rich purple and has golden yellow beards. And you can distinctively tell those yellow golden beards with this particular photo. And this is probably one of the best photos that I have been able to find of Rhythm. And in 1954, that was introduced for a price of $10. 1951, uh, Franklin Cook introduced Pinafore Lass, and Pinafore Lass is described as having heavily gathered falls and pleated in a form of a flower that is nothing like you've ever seen before. Now, Lloyd Austin, if you're familiar with Lloyd, and we're going to talk about him a little bit later on, was, was very, very descriptive with his catalog and provided wonderful pictures for us. So if you'll notice that cross is Snow Flurry by White Wedgwood. Now Snow Flurry from everything that I can read, any research that I can come up with, Snow Flurry is in the background of most, and I'm not gonna say all because someone would contradict me on that probably, but Snow Flurry I believe is in the background of most of the flat irises. And you'll notice HM 1952, that's honorable mention. So one year after the introduction. Now, most of you might um, have heard the name of Wilma Valet, um, hybridizer from the 50s. And she tells us in summary, in 1955, she had four flat seedlings from Plakata pink crosses. And she says um, two of them uh, were flat and then one was the reverse. Now, unfortunately, I've not been able to find any pictures of the irises that were introduced uh, by her or actually by Lloyd in 1960. But as early as 1960, um, she is talking about in her book about flatties that she has hybridized. So this is a picture of Lloyd, um, probably at an iris convention. You know, I see his little tag there. So it's probably at an iris convention. And Lloyd was a plant breeder, first of aerial irises, and introduced many named forms of the Regilias and Onococyclus species. Um, additional accomplishments included the development of reblooming irises. And then we know probably the rest of the story when the space age irises uh, started in the mid to early 1950s. You'll have to, what you have to know about Lloyd, if you have any of his old catalogs or if you've logged on to AIS and they have scanned several of his catalogs from the 40s, 50s, and early 60s, um, but his catalogs told stories. And Lloyd was a salesman, so he wanted you to love irises as much as he did. And he wanted you uh, to buy irises. So in his catalogs, you know, Rainbow Offerings, and then he later called it the Iris Color Guidebook, um, he tells some wonderful stories in, and gives you such vivid descriptions of the irises that you can just picture them in your mind. So again, those that know me through the Novelty Iris Society know when I do my President's Message, I always talk about Lloyd, and I always sign off like Lloyd signed off. Uh, when he was doing a writing and he was always signed off as aristatically yours. So let's look at some of Lloyd's um, flatties. These are pictures that I took from his catalog. Uh, this is Clementina, 1955. He tells us that the flower spread up to nine inches. And now he says all six petals have beards. I kind of question that just uh, from this one bad photo that I have. I can't really see that, but Lloyd tells us that. That was a cross of Snow Flurry and again, Capitola. So there's Snow Flurry, remembering that the mama always goes first. So Snow Flurry was what the pollen uh, went on and created the pod. 
Now, giant clematis came around in 1958. Again, Lloyd tells us that it's nine inches across. It's 32 inch stalks, so a little bit taller stalks, which is good. He says the parentage is lost, however, it could be from the same cross as Clementina. On this one, you can distinctively see the gold beards here on, on the segments. Now, white parasol came about in 1958. So as a seedling, it was the hit of the parade in the 1957 AIS Memphis Convention. It was nine inches across. Again, Lloyd Austin in his catalog wants us to buy that iris. And he tells us that it's in constant demand as a corsage flower or to be used indoors in flat containers. And it has heavy substance. He says it's great for hybridizing. And Lloyd was always one that did tell us that, hey, this is gonna be great for hybridizing, pollen fertile, pod fertile. He's, he's always willing to help us along. So in 1958, this was introduced for $25. So in today's dollars, that's about $200 is what that would have been, what would have been introduced for. This is Little Freak, really, really cute little border bearded, 22 inches, so it's a little diploid. And you can see the little stems of the stalks are, are uh, narrow, but the flowers are well supported um, on those stalks and she blooms very, very well for us. This is Pink Magnolia that was introduced by Brown in 1970. This is Topless Dancer that Louise Belagamba did in 1976. And I hope you had an opportunity to at least meet or know Louise. A great iris hybridizer and also daylily hybridizer. And this is Flopsy. And fortunately, Kathy Gates introduced this, uh, registered it in 1990. Um, obviously, it had been created a number of years before, but had never been introduced. And again, its breeding goes back to Parisima. And Parisima is the mother of Snow Flurry. So I told you that they were STB flatties. Um, I could not find a picture of win some, lose some of Alan Insminger's in 1997. So there again, I'm reaching out to you. If you happen to have a picture of this or happen to grow it, uh, keep me in mind. I'd love to have a picture of it to add to our program. And on the right is Can't Stop. Now, Gene Gaddy introduced this in 1985. He tells us that the six falls are on the early blooms and the three falls on the last bloom. So I guess we're probably seeing a photo of the last uh, of the bloom. This is Amaryllis, um, introduced in 1995, 27 inches tall. Again, I've researched and it goes back four generations but Snow Flurry is in the background because Brother Charles introduced Celestial Snow and it was a cross of Snow Flurry and Celestial Blue. Other flat shaped flowers are six pack, a very popular iris that was introduced. And then Judy Mogul was introduced by James McWhorter in 1997. So if you'll notice a lot of the flatties are in that blue, lavender, um, purple tones. And speaking of lavender, there's flat rate of Joe Gios, 1994. And look at the width of those petals. Beautiful, beautiful width there on those petals. This is what a mixture um, introduced in 1999. You've got the broken color here, as well as being a flatty. Mr. Anaga introduced Letty Leonetti in 2009. And then Mr. Kerr did New Perspective in 2004. Again, both of these, you can distinctively see those beards. Now in 2008, Shriners introduced fluffy pillows, again, in that light blue, icy blue tones. And then Impersonator, if you can see one in AGM for, uh, and it was introduced in 1975. And then there's Orbison. And I don't know if you grow Orbison or not, but when they say this is eight to nine inches across, it definitely grows that tall for us and that wide for us in Texas. Um, very popular, opens two or three at the same time. Stalks are, are good and sturdy, so it definitely supports the flower. 
Now we see heart tugs the heartstrings in 2005. Um, pink tones, we haven't seen anything like that so far. Those distinctive electric orange beards. And guess what? Look what we're seeing. We are seeing horns. Very thin, narrow horns coming up. On the right is UFO that the Spoons did in 2007. Again, flatty, but we've got this broken color here on the falls. In 2015, just five years ago, um, Tom Johnson introduced Wooly Voo. Again, getting that more rich tone here, but again, flatty with the broken color here. 2014, Tom introduced YB Normal. And this is, again, one of the first ones that we're beginning to see these different colorations here. And I did research, and Tour de France is in the background. So that's what, hopefully, um, is giving us some of that beautiful color here. So that's, that's nice. This is full disclosure of Tom Johnson 2013, won an HM in 2015. Again, a little bit of the broken color you can see, but definitely flatty. Now, in 2015, Hooker introduced Top Down, and Top Down is one of the first white ones that I've seen. It's out of Got Milk, uh, one of Terry Aikens, and you see this heavily, heavily ruffling here that's quite interesting. In 2016, Barry Blythe gave us Chaos Theory. Uh, very, very wide falls, very wide. In the Ukraine, we have Cosmic Lullaby. And this is one of the first ones that I've seen that has all the lacy edging here and lacy on the, on the style arms. Very pretty. This is Wichita Falls. And Z.G. Benson was a friend of my husband's. And he was a hybridizer in the uh, northwest of the Dallas area. And he, he hybridized this flatty iris back in the late 60s, early 70s. And Mr. Benson never introduced it because it was such a novelty. He really didn't know how successful that it would be. Well, fortunately, his granddaughter, Mary Rhodes, uh, kept the iris and grew the iris and grew it to the point that um, she was kind enough to let us introduce that iris and we introduced it Wichita Falls because that is the town um, where Mr. Benson was and it's very appropriate since it's a flatty falls. And you can see it is flat plus that beautiful uh, broken color there. So we were very fortunate that the proceeds of that iris go to the Novelty Iris Society. So from Russia, we see this beautiful icy blue that was registered in 2014. Mr. Kerr, again, 1999, begged to differ. And look at this, we're seeing the reverse here on the fall. So we're seeing some broken color here, and then the underside here um, has the light yellow uh, versus the blue. So in 2002, uh, George Sutton did Falling for You. And look, I see that one petal there that's standing up versus versus flat. And this may be that same thing that I'm seeing on Beg to Differ. 2018, just a couple of years ago, Barry uh, Blythe came out with Fiasco. Definitely a good contrast there between the dark purple and the yellow broken color here and broken color on the style arms. Terry Aiken did Frosty Moonscape, very light icy blue, very flat, very wide falls here in 2006. And then Marky Smith did Clydesdale in 2014. Again, very distinctive. You would definitely know most of these, if not all of these flatties I showed you, if you did not even have <clears throat> a name tag in front of it. So flatty, broken color is what you've got. Now, what I want to mention with the flatties, um, that if anything, uh, and I wouldn't consider it a fault necessarily, but on the flatties, the buds are round. They're round. They're not cone-shaped. They're round. And when you get those round buds and you get all those, those pieces of petals and everything inside there, sometimes it has difficulty opening. And if you're a daylily person, um, you know what I'm talking about because the daylilies, uh, sometimes the big ruffly ones have this same issue trying to open. So sometimes that thin tissue that's dried around the, the top that now you can see it here, 
I just give the iris a little bit of extra help and peel some of that down to allow it to go ahead and open. Because if you don't, it'll just sit there the whole time in uh, of its little bloom life and it will never open. Uh, David Toth is coming out with several very, very interesting novelty irises. And this is one of his seedlings. Again, look, we're seeing the horns here. I only see the horns on three, uh, but very pretty. And then this was Mr. Nebaker uh, from Utah. And when I did a program for their group several years ago, um, I was able to get this picture and also grow the seedling and very wide, dark, velvety falls in those bright gold beards. My most recent um, addition to our garden, um, my husband and I uh, trade irises with a hybridizer in Colorado, and she has reserved this name called Strange Beauty. And if you notice, it's a border bearded, and it's a flatty. Um, obviously, that hybridizer is very, very proud of this, as she should be. So I look forward to, to growing that in our garden. So let's look at broken color a minute. So irises with random streaking of one or more colors are called broken color, which sometimes you'll see the abbreviation BC. You'll see it sometimes called random color application. You'll see it sometimes referred to as color break or CB. And then you'll also sometimes see it as variegated blossoms, which is VB. But we're all talking about the same thing. So whether we're calling it broken color, random color application, it's an expression of an unstable color gene or other genetic material thought to produce flowers that exhibit a random application of two or more colors. It goes on to say that while the color pattern of streaking and splashing should be fairly consistent from flower to flower, the color markings themselves are random applications. And I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about with that. Now, again, uh, broken color irises are, are not something that's brand new. They've been around a long time, just not to the popularity we have them today. But early in the 20th century, uh, French hybridizing was well known uh, by the name of Bill Morin. And Pat Bill Morin and his two sons um, had a garden, did a lot of iris hybridizing. So we believe that Antares uh, may be the first tetraploid broken color in commerce. And we're going to see a couple of pictures of Antares. And then the first diploid broken color was Victorine by Lamone in 1840. So I show this slide every time I do a program because I think it's funny. Um, I don't know necessarily what your garden centers look like where you live. I can tell you in Dallas, um, we don't have any garden centers that look like this, but uh, this was the Bill Morin uh, Gardens. Um, and again, I would love to have just been there to just, just to see that garden. I think it'd been absolutely beautiful. This is a picture of their 1934 catalog. And again, um, being the age that this catalog is, you can see the, the delicate um, artist work that, that goes on to make these catalogs. Okay, so I promised information about Victorine. So this is Victorine on, on the left by Lamone. You can see the broken color up here on the standards, and you can see that tigering or the streaking on the falls. And then on Antares, um, which I said was the first probably tetraploid, um, we see the streaking down here, the broken color, and then the broken color on that bud that's opening. And this is just a little bit different picture of Antares, and, but you can definitely see that purple uh, specks on the standards in the falls. So a little bit more about Victorine. Uh, we believe that that cross is Florentina by Pokey. Um, if you get a chance, read Clarence Mahan's book, Classic Irises. Clarence did a fabulous job, great historian. But he tells us that this iris was probably um, introduced into commerce under various names. So the Wing Seed Company in 1920 uh, tells us that this iris is very scarce, um, but it has oddly flecked, deep velvet, 
uh, violet, strongly tigered at the base. And again, I tell you, that's what the, the streaking is, was called tigered. <clears throat> this is Victorine's parents. Again, the species Iris Florentina and probably Pokey. Uh, this is the best picture that I could find of this that was in Mr. Uh, Steger's book. But if it was Koki, I think that's probably where this broken color is coming in because while this is just a, you know, a photo, a very old photo, I think you can see that there. So other broken color irises or kaleidoscope, uh, little MTB in 1929, um, really cute thing, easily available in commerce these days. Uh, this beautiful coloration here on the fall. And then Corsage was introduced in 1956, and it's the yellow and white blending of colors here with a broken color. And then there's a little Minnesota mix-up kit, really, really cute, grows very, very well for most people. It's considered a border bearded, and while it was um, probably hybridized in the 1970s, it was almost 30 years later before it was actually introduced into commerce. This is a picture of Brad and Kathy Kasparik, and hopefully a lot of you knew Brad and Kathy. Um, they had zebra gardens. Uh, they all, Brad always wore his zebra jacket, you know, and he was always very distinctive um, when he was at one of our conventions. Great people, did a, a wonderful job in many, many of the different iris categories, but particularly in the broken color categories. So a couple of the Kasparik zebras, um, both of these are award winners and they're out of Maria Termina, which I want you to hold that name to the side because we're going to talk about Maria in a minute. But this is a border bearded baboon bottom on the left. Um, again, you can see those broken colors and you can see the little purple flecks here on the standards in the falls. And then the very popular tiger honey. Two other Casperi creations are Dozy Doe, which is an IB, and then Flamingo Green Doe. And you'll all remember that the Casperics came out with a lot of uh, news and the, the new series. And this was the first one, won an HM and an AM. It's out of Maria Termina. <clears throat> this is Jumping Jack Flash on the left that Mr. Painter did in uh, 2004. And it's out of News Flash, Please, uh, introduction. And then there's Millennium Falcon. And look at the broken color background that's in Millennium Falcon. It's got Newsflash, Fatigue, it's got Maria Termina. So it's got triple doses of lots of broken color background. So this is um, Hot Dogs and Mustard that Kathy did. Kathy got an HM and an AM. It's out of Maria Termina um, as the mom. Um, in 2005, on the right, you see Liger that the Spoons did. And that introduction was out of Autumn Years, which is Broken Color, which we're going to see in a few slides. So I mentioned the famous Maria Termina, and um, this was introduced in 1987. Um, Maria was a friend, um, or actually bought irises for a number of years from Alan Insminger in Lincoln, Nebraska. Um, he, this was an award winner, and his Batik was also an award winner, the Knowlton Medal. Um, he received numerous um, AIS awards and the Bennett Jones Award from the Median Iris Society. But this is the famous Maria Termina in the background of a lot of broken color. So if you're thinking about hybridizing broken color irises, this would be number one on my list. So Alan's creations, I mentioned Batik. Look, you've got this beautiful broken color here. And then you've got lots of color uh, break here on some of the standard in the falls. I mentioned autumn years that was out of uh, the background of Liger. And this is one that Alan did in 1996. And this is Alan. And I'm so happy when the convention was in Omaha a number of years ago that Alan's garden was on tour and I got to meet him. And this is the most familiar type photo of Alan in his garden with his irises. But fantastic guy. And again, I hope you had an opportunity to meet him or to get to know him. 
In 2009, Paul Black introduced Wizard of Oz. And here's kind of a trivia question. Who was the Wizard of Oz? Okay, let me give you a hint. It's going to be Alan Ensminger because that was his nickname was he was the Wizard of Oz. So Paul named that for him and I think that that's fantastic. So going back in time in 1962, um, Keith Kempel introduced Humoresque, uh, Broken Color. You can see that particularly on the falls here. And again, look what's in the background of Humoresque. There's Snow Flurry. Now this is the first Broken Color that we have seen out of Snow Flurry. But again, Snow Flurry would be an iris. Again, if I was interested in hybridizing, just playing around with a couple of things to see what I got, I would definitely include Snow Flurry on my list of irises to get. This is against all odds on the right that Hooper did um, out of Batik uh, in 2006. This is the famous Bewilder Beast uh, that uh, Brad and Kathy introduced. It won several medals. And then on the right is, isn't this something that Alan did in 1993, got an HM for that, and it's out of Maria Tomina. Now look at this. This is really interesting because Mike Sutton in 2008 came out with Fine Mess. You've got broken color here, you've got broken color on the standards, and you've got these distinctive horns here. Now in 2015, <clears throat> Tom Bursine, a Texas hybridizer, introduced Don't Doubt Dalton. And you'll see that it has the purple flecks, some very, very dark purple flecks on the white background, yellow halves, I mean, uh, here, and then this electric orange fading to white, nice horn here. Um, in 2016, Tom introduced Spring Starter. And yes, these are sisters. But I can see why Tom would have introduced both of them because while they're sisters and they look similar, they're very different. Uh, Spring Starter is what the name tells you. It will probably be the first iris that opens in your garden and hopefully you don't get a late freeze because sometimes that, that is a, a problem that I have. Spring Starter is already starting to bloom and I get a late freeze. But anyway, Spring Starter, wider falls, a little bit lighter in the purple flex, but definitely uh, both of those, you can tell they're sisters. So uh, Mr. Tyson introduced uh, Broken Border, uh, Border Bearded in uh, 2016. Now you're seeing the kind of peach apricot standards and the very, very wide falls with the broken color. In 2012, he uh, won some awards with Broke Again, again, uh, pink in the lavender tone. 2017, we have an SDB called Circus Act that has the broken color on the falls, very distinctive broken color. And this is another one of Tyson's introductions called Blurred Vision. I mentioned David Toth earlier, um, having several uh, broken color flatties and so forth at the National Convention. These are two of his broken color seedlings that were there. The one on the right, look, we've got the broken color and we've got nice, consistent flounces. These are some seedlings that Paul Black was kind enough to send me pictures. This is Princess Wildcat, an SDB, a couple of years ago, but definitely you can see the broken color. Another little SDB broken color. This is a tall bearded. Um, now we're getting the kind of the orange tones and, as well as the raspberry and blue and, and purple. This is Rush to Judgment. Um, again, getting different. So we're getting some of the muted broken colors here on the standards, but then we get the distinctive broken colors on the falls. Another seedling with the peach and the, the kind of uh, uh, break thank you for watching this video by the american iris society please subscribe to our channel and don't forget to click on the little bell that will notify you when the next video is posted